Hi folks, Donnie here again. I'm back with another video and this time it's something a little bit different. Uh, I'll be doing a video on Walla Bag. Um, this is a service that um, is a bit like a read, sort of like a read it later bookmarking service, something like Pocket or Instapaper. This is an odd name. The name is derived from a pocket or pouch or a bag sort of thing that a kangaroo or a wallaby has for taking things away in. So, yeah, hence the wallow for wallaby, I take it, and the bag for pouch. Uh, obviously, they wanted something fairly distinctive, and I think um, that, that did the trick. You can also see from the logo over here on the top left, it also looks a bit like a wallaby. So, um, yeah, just in case anybody wondered. So, you're also wondering probably what does the service do for you and what can you do with it? Basically, any web article that you're reading on a mobile phone or desktop browser, you, this, this service, if you use this little bookmarking service, it will strip out the navigation and adverts from the web articles and it'll just keep the content for offline reading. Or like in my case, I often queue up articles that I find interesting for posting maybe later on in my blog um, so that I, I'm not going to post 20 in a day. You know, some, in some cases you're going to find that there's days um, that there's a lot of good content around and there's other days where there's just like nothing available so it helps having a couple of things that you've got uh, that you can make use of later another reason for me is I sometimes also want to keep something good for reference later on so it's often something that I will then save and put in into this sort of service that I can just call up later on uh, and which is one of the reasons why I've actually done this video in the first place because I, I've noticed also with Pocket, which I was using, Pocket is a great service, but they've, a lot of their stuff is now, or some of the things have become premium, especially things that I wanted to make use of. So typically one of the items there, if you want permanent archive of, of content, uh, to be able to call that content up again a year or two later, that's part of their paid service. So yeah, the basic service is free, but certain little things, and you know, those are things that you need, then Wallet Bag might be something you, you want to have a look at. So it is open source software and you've got two options for using it. You can take the hosted service by Wallabag. They proudly state there that they host in the EU and not in the USA. I see that quite a bit nowadays. They charge for that service, not for the software, but for the hosting service and keeping it available, support, etc. You're going to pay about nine euros per annum, which is just under $10 per annum. It's a nice one-stop service, so essentially it's going to be almost like you've got, say, a, a premium pocket service. So remember, for pocket, you're going to be paying about $30 per annum, so it is about a third of the price. The other option, and this is the one that I opted for, is you can use the source code for free, and you can install it on your own server hosting or on a virtual private server, which then includes things like permanent uh, available archiving, uh, which, as I said earlier, is one of the pay only options for for pocket pocket also charges for suggested tags and full search yeah you're also getting full search as well so um, again if you take the self-hosted option it's free of charge if you've got um, something like cpanel hosting or with a subtacular service that's often one of the included scripts there under subtacular already so it might just be three or four clicks and you can install or wallaby yourself and run it on your own uh, paid um, hosting services so you, that's something certainly to look at then you'll be basically getting everything that you're seeing that I've got here at the moment um, the other thing is if you've got your own server it's as permanent as you want it even if Wallabag itself shuts down um, you're still going to have it running in your server for the next however many years you want to keep it running so you're not at, at the mercy of somebody else's cloud service um, then the other thing is, of course, nobody's also selling your information. If you've got it on your server, whatever you're clicking, reading, highlighting, and so on, there's nobody looking over your shoulder, inserting adverts in it, or um, anything of the kind. You, you are also then, as your own administrator, you could also register friends and family to make use of the service as well. So you could run it on their behalf and provide them with a, a Instapaper or a pocket type, type service. Um, then the other thing is to get your information in you, it does offer the option as well to uh, migrate in from other services directly. So in my case, I imported my stuff from Pocket. 
It was as easy as just getting the API key that you that Pocket shows you how to do. You use that uh, API key, it sucked all my data in, um, and you can see a whole bunch of them here, archived, unarchived, starred, etc. Um, it'll also import from older versions of Wallabag. The reason for this is you, you could take the paid service online, the hosted service, and you can later on decide, no, I don't want it anymore, I want to host myself, and you can import your data, so you do it over there. You can import from Readability, Instapaper, Pinboard, and Firefox bookmarks, and Chrome bookmarks as well. Um, so those are all options to, to get your to get data in. Uh, just a note there though, there is something odd that I did pick up. <clears throat> when I needed to register my, um, uh, I had to do the self-install, and I did my self-install, there was this one little quirk here. Um, when I was setting up my bookmark, I did have a problem with the URL. When I was using this URL, I had to include the slash web. So just something to remember if you're setting up your, your bookmarking. So, um, yeah, the other thing I suppose, let's, let's have a look at how I actually will uh, import something to um, Wallabag. If I've got an article over here at the moment, this is just an article on how to geek it. I've already installed that um, add-in into my browser. You can see it over there. At the moment, it's grayed out color-wise. Uh, you'll see it will change color once we've added the link. <clears throat> and this is the link I was talking about, uh, the... Um, the extension to get this extension in just remember I had to add that little slash web I don't think you've got to do it with their hosting but certainly for your own it might just be something you've got to do so all you have to do is if you're reading the article you just go up there you click on it this pops open and all you have to now do is type in the the tags and you'll see also if I type a tag in it's also already got the suggested tag. It's, it's found that I have got tags existing called FOSS, so I can choose that one. I could add any other ones here that I wanted to. Uh, also of interest here and unique to, to Wallabag is you can edit the title of the article, which you can't do on Pocket. So you could click on that and change how it appears in the, um, in the list itself. Um, and then other options just briefly here are you can just tick it to make it to go straight into archive that I want to keep it as unread for later use. You can have it as a starred article and you can also delete um, and you'll see now the moment I've saved this first of all you see it's highlighted the color over there that means this is already this page has already been bookmarked but there's where I'd come back if I want to delete it or I made a mistake and I'd bookmark it by mistake or anything I could just go straight there and delete it. Let's go across back to the service and then you can see what it looks like there. Uh, and there's the article that I've just bookmarked now. You'll see it's popped up there with its tag. Some of the others have got two or three or four tags in them. Um, you also notice here it shows a, a estimated reading time. This is something that you can actually set in the um, in the application itself and I'll show you in a few minutes just where you where you get to that you've got the normal sort of filter uh, statuses over here on the left same as pocket has got uh, unread you can look at what you have starred for later what you've archived all and of course you can see a tag view as well you can see how many you've got in which tag obviously you click on the tag it's going to filter just on on showing you that tag as well Then the other thing that's quite interesting is um, over here on filtering the entries themselves. Uh, this is also unique to, to Wallabag. So we've got some very powerful options. Obviously, you can do the obvious things at the top, but you can also filter on has it got a just the articles that have got a preview image, ones that have got a public link, uh, a particular language, um, HTTP status. You can, you can look also for reading time, short articles, long articles only, a particular domain name, or a particular range of creation dates. So there's quite powerful things here to find what, you, you know, what you've bookmarked already if you've filtered it up over a period of a couple of years. You can also on the left over here change the view between the sort of grid layout and a list view. There's the list view. And 
The other thing you can do here is you can also export your all these articles, all the unread articles. I can export it as as e, a zipped EPUB, maybe for uh, Kindle, PDF, JSON file, uh, comma separated value, text file, or XML. So also quite handy. That can be for offline reading or for exporting to um, other devices. On the article itself, yes, we've already said there that it's got the time there. You can you've got options yet to, to mark it as read and then it's going to basically archive it. You've got toggle star on and off and you can delete the article itself. Another little interesting thing it's got here is if you click on here, you get a quick snippet of what's in the text, which is sometimes not that obvious if you're just looking at the at the preview. So again, quite a nice little option. If you click on the actual article, again, it's got what we've seen over here. You can edit the title again if you want to. It also notes I've done two annotations already. So if you go down to annotations, it's again similar to what Pocket's doing, but Pocket does highlighting only. One nice thing that Pocket does is if you highlight some text, you can of course share just that text. So that's quite handy. But what um, Wallabag does is it highlights and you'll notice here it's put um, you can add little annotations um, as well and it's as easy as basically just highlighting text like that clicking the little pencil and saying annotate I hope I spelled oh, oh there's my dyslexia and uh, annotate and save so obviously no option to share it but uh, that's another nice little feature you've got I suppose the other thing that's that's maybe just worthwhile showing in this view specifically obviously you can export again to the one article to EPUB Mobi and so on but you've also got a couple of share options here some of these haven't been working a hundred percent for me I see some of these you can configure like the diaspora I've configured uh, Twitter carrot I'm not using at the moment email works as well unmarket is also a service um, Scuttle is a bookmarking service. Charlie, I haven't used. Um, the only thing to note there maybe is Pocket does have shares to things like Reddit, uh, Facebook, and a couple of other options which this doesn't have. So it, it does lack a bit there. I'm not too worried about that because I don't tend to share from inside my app. I'm using this as a repository in a queue really. I tend to open the main article up still later on when I'm going to work with it. And from there, I usually do my sharing. So it's not for me a major um, problem. But the one that is interesting here is the public link. So I'll, I'll put a, a link below this video. You'll find a link there with the public link to this article just to see if you click on it, what sort of view you get. But essentially, it's one way of um, saving a whole lot of articles or using the public link but you can maybe then use that to share on social media anyway things like to twitter and to to various other places it'll be a permanent link off your server then so um yeah that's about all i really can show on the article side this is the view you're going to be where you're going to be reading offline obviously um, i'll just show one or two or some of the menu options that are worth looking at under config over here on the left this is where you set things like the reading rate so you're gonna that's it, it uses this for your for the estimate of how long the article is going to take you can set things like the number of articles on a page you can change uh, the theme as well over there um, how it acts and how it works um, also at the bottom over here is a QR code that you can use to automatically set up your Android app um, and that's actually quite handy as well. Um, just helps it's a bit quicker than to type everything in. The RSS feed option here is also quite nice. This is something, if you set up this feed, you could advertise the RSS feed. And anybody with an RSS reader, whether on their phone or on their web or whatever, will get updates as your bookmarking article. So for some people, that might be quite a, quite a handy little feature to have. And then tagging rules over here I haven't used this yet but you can put a couple of automatic uh, settings to automatically add tags based on certain things that match titles um, the URL um, domain name that type of thing that will automatically tag it for you 
Then the other one, possibly we can just have a look at, okay, users management, I'm not going to go into there now at the moment, but that's where you'd go and add friends and family and other users as the administrator. On internal settings, you can set um, your settings here for PWIC, for, that's for web stats, for visits, pages, read, how often it's used. You're going to mainly probably use this if, if you've got friends and family using it. You just want to see how well it's used and, and what's happening there. You've got API settings as well. This is where you'd set your, your custom links to, to share. For example, Diaspora, I'd put in my own Diaspora pod address there. Uh, you could, if you put zeros here, you could disable certain of these things as well. Um, there's your export options, which you can turn on and off as well. I'd already mentioned some around import. And uh, miscellaneous has got a demo mode as well, which you could set up for um, people to, to have a look at. Just the last thing I want to show on the menu then is under how to, it shows you what sort of clients it can work with. So I mentioned before the browser add one that was the, I'm using Firefox at the moment. So I downloaded and installed Firefox, but you've got for Chrome, which will obviously also work on the Chromium browsers, such as Chromium itself, uh, Vivaldi, Brave browser, and, and a couple of others, as well as Opera browser. And on the mobile app side, uh, Android, iOS, and Windows Phone. Is that still a thing? I don't think so. Um, on the Android side, it worked quite well for me. If, I, if I'm in a browser and I say share, it will show me Wallabag as an option to share to, and it pops up immediately inside my, my list over there. So that's working quite nicely. The app itself, of course, also syncs with either your server or their online server. So I could use that on my tablet or on my phone to take my offline content with me, say on the airplane or whatever, and read it. Um, there as well and market is red and and so on so that's quite a handy it's got a couple of shortcuts as well uh, for quickly getting around the application um, it's got some stats at the bottom here I see but I've only been using it for one day and I suspect that's because I imported everything in a day so it'll probably start showing you things like you know how many you read a day and so on but um, yeah that's pretty well much that's pretty well much wallet bag actually there's not many much more to it um, I can just show you a pocket view quickly as well, just to get a, a, an idea of, of this look and feel. There's pocket. Those are the same articles that were imported. So the difference here you're going to see is there's your options to favorite is the same as star. You can add tags. You can archive, which will be the same as red, delete. And from here you can share. And of course, the other difference is, like I said, uh, pocket has got a few other interesting options, like straight to LinkedIn. Uh, Reddit, Tumblr, Buffer, that sort of thing. Again, if you're not sharing directly out of here, that's not going to be too much of a problem for you. Um, on Pocket, oh, the other thing that Pocket has got that um, Wallabag doesn't have, um, and that's probably the only other thing mostly, is a discover option. So they've got discovery of articles. Again, something Wallabag maybe doesn't have, but... Um, I use my RSS feeds anyway to discover articles. I don't use my my um, read it later application, so not such a problem. But yeah, so that that's basically it in a nutshell. If um, anybody's got questions, pop the questions below the video and um, or or in the post that I'm that I'll that I'll be sharing, and I'll try and answer what I can um, about Wallabag. But an interesting option, like I said, if you are paying for premium services, it may be well worth looking for. And the other thing, like I said, is being open source. You've got full control over your data. No one else is spying on your data. And as long as you keep it running, it's available to you, uh, regardless of anybody else shutting down their services. So hope you found it interesting. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks.